Hey everyone, Mike here. Welcome to part one of a three-part series dedicated to building your very own responsive home theater ambulay system using Hyperion NG. Part one will only require a Raspberry Pi and an 8 gig micro SD card. We'll be covering how to set up a headless Raspberry Pi, how to install Hyperion, and how to access the web UI once everything is all said and done. So if you have everything we need, let's jump right into it. The first thing we want to do is download the Raspbian Lite image from the link below. I'm going to use Etcher to write it to my micro SD card, but if you don't have Etcher, you can use the Raspberry Pi imager, which they offer themselves. All you need to do is select the image and select the micro SD card and select flash. When it's done verifying, it's going to go ahead and unmount, so you're going to want to unplug and plug it back in for our next part. A headless Raspberry Pi setup requires two files to be created on the boot partition before you can SSH into it. So when it's plugged back in, using terminal, or your favorite text editor, we're going to create a blank file called ssh on the boot partition. This will allow you to utilize the Pi user and its password raspberry to connect over the network to your Raspberry Pi and send remote commands to it. The next file we need to create is the WPA supplicant file. This file is what tells your Raspberry Pi your SSID and password to connect to on the network. Using the code snippet below, Copy it into the WPA supplicant file. There are three things here that need attention. Your country code, the SSID, and the PSK. After verifying your country code, you will need to change the SSID to the name of your wireless network. You will also need to change the PSK to your personal password. Make sure not to copy my entries as they will be specific for your network. When you have double checked everything and it all looks good, go ahead and save your file, eject your micro SD card, and put it into your Raspberry Pi and plug it into the wall. Once your Raspberry Pi is booted, we need to figure out the IP address of it. I use a Ubiquiti Amplify system and can log in using my phone's app and check the devices connected to the network. Most people will want to hit their router's front web UI using the IP address listed on the router. It also should tell you the username and password to log in as well. A good rule of thumb will be set a static IP for this device. I'm choosing .17 on my network, so I know that anytime I want to connect to it, I can use that specific IP. Now that we know the IP of the Raspberry Pi, we're going to SSH into it. The command for that is SSH space pi at sign IP address, and in my case, 192.168.50.17. The first time you connect, it's going to ask if you want to add it to known hosts. We're going to want to type yes, and then we're going to want to use the default password raspberry at the prompt. Once logged in, it's going to tell you to change the password using PASSWD. Go ahead and do that. You're going to need to supply the current password, raspberry, and then a new password twice for verification. Once your password is changed, we have a few steps left before we can install Hyperion. We're going to use the command sudo apt-get update because we want to get the most recent package information available for our current distribution. Luckily, this doesn't take too long, and then we're going to have to install a collection of packages for our underlying system to use. This command will be in the description below, as will the other commands for ease of use. Go ahead and run sudo apt install in the list of packages once the update has completed. I'm showing the entire process in this video with some of it sped up just so you can follow along and see all of the output. Hopefully this makes it easier for you folks to follow. Now that we have those packages installed, we're going to upgrade the underlying drivers for our specific Raspberry Pi. Using the command sudo apt 
full upgrade, we'll be able to update our Broadcom and Atheros drivers, as well as a few other things. Go ahead and run the command. This process is gonna take a few minutes, so go ahead and sit it off to the side, and we can come back to it when it's ready. This next part is optional, but now that these drivers have been upgraded, I like to run a sudo shutdown-r now just to restart the Pi and then log back in. Now we want to cd to our home Pi directory and use the wget command based on whichever Raspberry Pi you're using. It'll be arm7 for the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 or arm6 for the Raspberry Pi 0. Wget is a Linux command that allows you to download a remote file. We'll be downloading an officially pre-compiled deb instead of having to download and compile it ourselves on the Raspberry Pi. Once that's complete, we can run an ls-al on our folder and see that we have the Hyperion 2 Alpha 6 deb downloaded. To install this file, we're going to run a dpackage-i on the deb we just downloaded. What this is going to do is run the setup for us, and it also installs the service D file, which will start at every reboot on the Raspberry Pi. Now that the dpackage command has completed, we're going to restart the Raspberry Pi one more time with another sudo shutdown dash r now. What this will do is it will restart the Pi, and when we start, we should be able to connect to the Hyperion web UI. A good practice once the Pi is restarted is to SSH in again and use PSEF with a grep on Hyperion to verify that it's running. That is completely optional though. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open a browser and go to our Raspberry Pi's IP address at port 8090. This should bring us to the Hyperion web UI. The first time you access it, you'll get a pop-up that says your default password is set, which is Hyperion. Go ahead and change it if you like. I'm gonna go ahead and put it to just a basic password one, two, three, and hit okay. When you see password saved successfully, you're good to go. We still need our Node MCU setup and our WS2812D LEDs on our TV, but we are one third of the way there, folks. Look out for parts two and three, those should be coming shortly, and we'll be able to have the whole thing up and running.